Today I'm going to show you how to make sauerkraut. And when you're making sauerkraut, you can use just red cabbage or green cabbage, but I'm going to actually do a mixture of the two. And what you'll need a smasher, get something like this, or pretty much any flat surface that you can just smash the cabbage with. If you have a stainless steel bowl, anything of that type, that's going to work great. Some caraway seeds to throw in there, a ball jar, and a plastic, you, I know it's evil plastic, but we are going to need something to seal off the jar, but I use just a plastic freezer bag, it's a little thicker. This I'm going to use to sanitize the jar that I'm going to be putting the sauerkraut in to ferment. This is only going to take four to six days to be fully ready. It's going to be full of lacto, uh, lactobacillus or lactic acid, which is um, specifically lactobacillus plantarum, I believe it's pronounced. But um, it is a probiotic, it's a good bacteria. And every time you make cabbage or sauerkraut, you're going to get all these different strains of bacteria that you wouldn't necessarily get in your traditional probiotic. Most probiotics have the same strain. It's the certain, you'll read the list when you buy it in the store. When you make something whole from nature, you're gonna get tons of different strains that you would never get in a supplement, and that's good for our body. I'm just simply gonna lay this jar, in fact, I could do it right now. Lay this jar in here and put the lid on and let it boil and steam and really sanitize the jar the whole time we're gonna start working on chopping up the cabbage. Okay, I've just removed all of the less than desirable outer leaves. You'll wanna take off maybe one or two, once you get to the actual nice looking leaves, take off one or two more leaves from each one. And what we're gonna be doing is saving these whole leaves to be folded up and used like, like a piston, like a barrier that's gonna go down in the jar and sit on top of our chopped up cabbage, which is to come. You can take your wonderful knife, whatever knife you have, this is the fun part. Now, you'll read sometimes online, they say, oh, go ahead and use a food processor. To no, don't use a food processor. You need to put your love, good energy, right into those little kraut cabbage leaves. And if you can make one good investment, one good knife, awesome to have in the kitchen because it really does replace a million other gadgets. Um, so here we're just going to, you just need to chop it about like this. Okay, it's always important to test your fresh cabbage while you're making it. Mm. Crunchy goodness. Now I'm also going to add, I just added the salt, and why you add salt is because it draws water. Water will always move from an area of higher concentration to lower concentration. You put salt all over this, the water is going to leave the cells of the sauerkraut le or cabbage leaves and move out. So you're going to be pulling the water out. This is also going to make it a lot easier. Oh, mashing is so much easier already. It's, I'm also going to throw in a tablespoon of... Well, maybe not. Eh, I'll throw in just a little less. You can do about a tablespoon. It's all to your taste. Um, I threw in some caraway seeds there. But again, you can put in any, any seeds you want. If you want to put in cumin, if you want to put in fennel, if you want to put dill in here, whatever you want to do. But what's important is just to be making sauerkraut in the first place. If you notice, when you go to the store, you buy yogurt today, or you see all these commercials on TV today, they're always like, oh, live active cultures. Well, that's because they have those probiotics in there. But again, with commercially manufactured yogurt, plus if you're vegan or you don't want to have any dairy in your diet, well, then what are you going to do? This is an alternative to that. But those cultures that are made um, commercially, they're adding, again, that very restrictive, very selective strain of bacteria 
and you're not going to get a full variety. When you use something from nature, it's going to grow a lot more strains of lactic acid bacteria than you would get, again, commercially. Um, some of the good things about making sauerkraut is that it can boost your immune system. It contains iso isothiocyanate is great because it helps reduce your risk of cancer. It also has sulforaphane, which can increase the antioxidant and antimicrobial activity that goes on in your guts. Okay, I just went and obtained my sterilized jar, just dumping the water out, <laughs> from the stove. Yeah, if you have little grabber tongs, you'll want to use that. And then it'll cool pretty quickly. And then you're also going to need a funnel. Now what I'm doing is I'm taking the cabbage, which has been really mashed. You can see it's very wet now because, and I've added no water. This is just the water that's contained within the leaves. In fact, you can see there's some in the bottom. I'm going to pour this water in there. Oh, we're having a mess. <laughs> A mess in the kitchen when I'm in the kitchen is only normal. Now I'm going to use, now this is a tart tamper, which I had no idea what it was until I went to the store the other day and I was like, I need a smasher. I used to use the um, butt end of one of my wooden um, soup spoons, but now I went and found something that's going to work better. You'll see the liquid, you can see the liquid rising up. If I push you can see the liquid rising up. If you need to, you can top it off with some water, but you shouldn't need to top it off with water. But if you do top it off with water, now here's my caution. If you use water, make sure you boil it first to get the chlorine out of it. You see, can you see the water rising up? See when I push, see all that water? That's just the natural water from the cabbage. Now, if you put chlorinated water into this, all those beautiful bacteriums will die. And then we have a useless project. So at this point, I don't have to add any water because I smashed it successfully good enough that the water came out. Isn't that beautiful? So it came out great. Now we're going to go back to those saved leaves that we had from earlier. You're just going to shove one of those guys right in there, but of course I got to take it's a little too big. So why am I doing this? I'm going to create a barrier so that when I put my plastic bag in here, it doesn't come into contact with my sauerkraut. So basically, I'm making a protective barrier of cabbage leaves so that there's no contact between this bag and my sauerkraut that's in there. Now, what the heck am I using this bag for? I will show you. You want to create an anaerobic, oxygen-free environment. Okay, there's the water. And then you can just go in here and push the bag. So now, there is a complete airtight seal between the inner environment and the outer environment. And you want you don't want to fill the water in here all the way up because what's going to happen is this is going to start to ferment over the next two, three days and bubble and it might push the water over. So you're done. This is it. This is sauerkraut making. Beautiful, fun, exciting. I love it. So now all you have to do is let this sit. Well, thank you for watching the uh, sauerkraut making video. Have a good day. Thank you.